Let's just pray before I continue. Heavenly Father, all praise and all glory belongs to you. Thank you, Lord, for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for every soul that is present here, God. Lord, thank you for carrying us through. Thank you, Lord, for the strength. Thank you, Lord, for the, your presence being with us. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given us and another new day that you've blessed us with. Lord, your word that is about to be expounded, minister, Lord, in your own mighty way. Open our hearts, enlighten our minds and our understanding. Help us, O Lord, not only to be hearers of your word, but help us to be doers, O Lord. Your word which, not, which will not return to you, void. But your word says that you shall fulfill everything according to the purpose for which you sent for it, Lord. We glorify you and we exalt you. At the end of the day, everything will be said and done, that your will be done in your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know Pastor Nigel and Sister Nicole has uh, greeted everyone, but I also like to greet you all again in the mighty, precious, wonderful, faithful, uh, and a beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. Some of you are wondering why I'm dressed like this. I'm going to preach down at the Fijian service after this as well. We're still a little traditional. I wear my ties in the car. I have to put on my tie before I go and preach down there as well. So. <laughs> but we're encouraging one another as we wait for the Lord. Amen. If Jesus Christ comes back today, are you sure you're going to go? You're going to meet him up in the air? Hmm, it's a little quiet. <laughs> Are you sure you're going to meet him? The Bible says when the trumpet blasts, when the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are still alive will be caught up with him in the air as well. According to, you can find that in the last verse, chapter of 1 Corinthians, in the beginning, uh, not 1 Corinthians, 2 uh, uh, Thessalonians, and the beginning of 2 Thessalonians. The end of 1 Thessalonians and the beginning of 2 Thessalonians, you'll find about the, the return of the Lord and other chapters as well. I just want to throw it in just to make sure yeah, that no one will be left behind. But this morning I want to share briefly from 2 Corinthians, just a few verses. Chapter 4, verse 16 to verse 18. And the title of my sermon goes like this. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. If you find it, or with you with me, please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to verse 18. Either you have a, a hard copy or you have an app. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Verse 18 says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Have you heard of the song, I have decided to follow Jesus? I have decided to follow Jesus. Yeah, we sing that a lot back at home. But the story behind this song is that there was a Welsh revival about 150 to 170 years ago. There was a Welsh revival, and as an outcome of the revival, they, there's a lot of missionaries that were sent out. And some of them, Baptist missionaries, went down to India. But they went to this certain tribe, and they were called headhunters. Okay, they were headhunted tribe. Um, very stubborn, so to speak. The word is used, they were stubborn. But only one family was saved. This family consisted of a, a father and a mother and two, two children, a 
or I'm not sure if they were sons and daughters or both sons, but two children and mom and dad. So the missionary is left, but this family started to reach out to other families as well, and people were coming to the Lord. The, the chief was disturbed by what was happening, so he called a, a village meeting into the public square. So they dragged the two children in front of the whole uh, the village, and they say to the parent, the chief said to the father and the mother, if you do not renounce your faith, we will kill your, your children. We will shoot them with arrows. But the dad responded and said, I have decided to follow Jesus. They shot the, the, the children with arrows, and as they were dying, they dragged his wife forward. And they said to him, unless and until you renounce your faith, we're going to kill your wife as well. He said, to the, him, he said to them, so none go with me, as yet I still will follow. They killed his wife as well. And then they said to him, all your family is dead. You will die too if you do not renounce your faith. And he said to them, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. And they shot him as well, and he died. But something happened that day. The chief was, he was shocked to see why this man had, per, uh, he had persevered and why he did not renounce his faith. And as a result of what had happened, the chief himself, long story short, the chief himself gave his heart to the Lord because he wanted to see as well. He wanted to taste what this man had tasted as well. And the chief, because of the chief, conversion to the Lord, the whole village was converted as well. So that's, that's the background to the song, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. So none go with me, yet I will follow, still I will follow. That's the lyric of the song, no turning back, no turning back. The last verse says, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. So this morning, I want to encourage us, hold on. I do not know what you're going through. I do not know what you're facing. I do not know the, whatever you have gone through during the week, your families, do with finance, or do with, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, relation with others. But I feel that God is trying to remind us this morning, hold on. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to Christ. Hold on to your confession. Hold on to what you believe in. We do not know when Christ will return, but we know that he is coming back. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe a hundred years from now, who knows? But I want to encourage this morning, hold on. Whatever happens in life, whatever happens in your family, whatever happens to you, you may be bullied in school. I was bullied in school as well. It's hard. Family was bullied as well by other families. That's all right. Okay. We were considered outcasts growing up. That is okay. We have Jesus. Jesus himself was you know, considered as. He was looked down upon, even though they highly respected him amongst the community because he was a rabbi. Okay. But the Bible says that he was despised. If you read the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, he was esteemed not. The question that I want to ask us tomorrow, today or this morning is, how can I? How can I hold on? How can you and I hold on? I have only two points. Number one is by not losing heart. If you read through the Gospels, read through the New Testament, Disciples or the apostles always remind the people, do not lose heart. Because if you read the uh, verse 8, okay. verse 8 says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but never abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We could lose heart by whatever is happening around. 
We could lose heart because of the things and the circumstances that we might go through. Financial constraints. Yesterday, I had a wonderful time um, talking with this beautiful couple, Dennis and Patricia. We had a couple of, cup of coffee. No, maybe we had two cups of coffee. I had two cups of coffee. And then we were encouraging one another. We came up with the story. We were reminded of the story of the song, uh, the hymn. What's the hymn? Mm -hmm. Blessed Assurance. Um, oh, I've forgotten the hymn. It is well with my soul. He lost his, his savings, his life savings. He had invested in the real estate. He lost his son, decided to send his family over to England, and lost all of his daughters in a, a ship, not a shipwreck, but there was a collation in mid, the mid-sea. And he received a note from his wife, save the Lord. He lost everything. But when he reached the spot of the, where the, he had lost his children, his daughters, the captain took, called him and said, this is the very spot where your, your daughters drowned. And that is where he penned down the words to the, to the hymn. Uh, when peace like a river attendeth my soul, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever the cost, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Hold on. The word uh, loose heart means to be utterly spiritless, to be exhausted or to be weary. We can grow exhausted by bad news. We can grow exhausted or grow weary by a lot of discouragement we face. Even at work, there's a lot of discouragement as well family problems. A lot of my friends who are here they no longer follow Christ because of family problems. The burdens that we carry, excess baggage, as Pastor Nigel mentioned this morning, it could wear us down. It could cause us to, to lose focus. It could cause us to grow weary. But I want to encourage this morning, hold on. The story of Job, he lost everything in one day. Satan entered the presence of the Lord. I'm not sure if you, you read about it. One, one, one day Satan followed the angels of God and he ended up in the, in the throne room of God. He still exists there now until God will throw him down, I mean, lock him up. But for now, he still has access. One day he walked into the throne room of God along with the angels and God asked him, where have you been? He said, oh, I've been roaming around the earth back and forth. I'm just paraphrasing. And then God said to him, did you notice my servant Job? Satan said to him, well, Job, I'm paraphrasing. He would give up if you would remove the hedge. Job is only worshipping you as he is because you have put a hedge around him and his family. You've protected him. Remove everything from him and he will curse you. God said, okay, go ahead, but do not touch his life. He went, the Bible says, in one day, his, his children were feasting, and there's a huge storm or huge wind that blew, and it, the house collapsed, and everyone, all of his children died. As, he, as this, uh, only a, a servant was alive, and the servant was reporting what had happened. As the servant was still speaking, another servant arrived. All of your animals is gone. They have raided all of your, uh, there's a raiding party that came and took everything. More bad news. You know what Job said? The Bible says that he stripped himself of uh, his robe, he threw ashes, and he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And later on, in Job chapter 19, I'm just going to read it to us. You know what he said? So, a lot of papers in my Bible. <laughs> Job chapter 19, 
verse 23 to verse 27 says, Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written in a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. He said in verse 25, I know that my Redeemer lives. And, he, and that in the end, he will stand upon the earth. Verse 26, listen to what verse 26 says. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Because, you know, after he had lost everything, Satan went back to God. And Satan said to God, skin for skin. A man will curse you. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So God said to him, okay, do whatever you want to do with him, but don't take his life. So the Bible says that Satan inflicted Job with boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He was covered with boils. And if you read the, the Hebrew in the origin, it says that it, it had uh, passed, oozing out. That's why if you read the, the, the whole story, it says that Job went down and he broke picked up uh, broken pottery pieces and he scraped it. The, his, uh, his skin, but there was nothing left to it. That's why he said, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. Hold on. You know the ending of the story of Job's life. He was blessed. He had doubled everything that he had lost. Do not lose heart by whatever you face. Because if you read the, the following verse in 2 Corinthians, it says, for all, they are light and momentary. Everything will pass away. Your troubles, they will pass away. The pain that you're facing right now, it will pass away one day. That's what Paul said to them, for our troubles are light and momentary. Nothing is permanent. God is. Your God is permanent. His words, they are permanent. Heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my words will remain the same. His promises, according to 1 Corinthians, they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. God is still the same. He was healer then. He's still healer today, and he will continue to heal. He was provider back then. He's still provider today. He will continue to provide. Compared to what Paul said here, for our, our troubles are light and momentary. They're temporary. Your troubles are temporary. Pain is temporal. It will disappear one day. If you read the book, the psalmist uh, says, um, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, that's another song that I, I love listening to as well. It says, hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping lasts for the night. Something like that. And hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. The darkest hour means dawn is just inside. Eh? The darkest hour means dawn is just inside. When you go through trials, when you go through tribulations, hardships in life, no, that, that, they're just temporary. Don't lose heart. And my last point this morning, I have a lot to say, but is don't lose focus. Never lose focus because your trouble, sometimes when we face troubles, when we face difficulties in life, when we face circumstances in life, we focus on our troubles and we lose focus on God. The moment we focus on our troubles, our troubles can become bigger than God in itself. The longer we focus on our troubles, the bigger they become and the smaller God it becomes. So never take your eyes off Christ. Focus your eyes always on God. Don't lose focus. Don't lose heart and never lose focus. The last verse says, So we fix our eyes not what on, on what is sin, but on what is unseen.
For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's how we stay focused. That's how we hold on. That's how we don't, do not lose heart. By focusing on God and not on the, the hardships or the trials or the tribulations that we go through. Amen. Sickness is temporary. God is eternal, permanent. Beauty will fade away one day. That's why Paul says, okay, outwardly, we are wasting away. But yet, inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. That's why he said in the book of Romans chapter 8, for our present suffering is not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed. It's not worth comparing. That's why we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary. Everything will come to an end one day. Amen. John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world or anything in this world. Okay. Anything in this world, the love of the flesh, the love of the eyes, and the pride of life. And he goes on to say, for the world and its desires pass away. But those who do the will of the Lord will endure. Right. The world and its desires pass away. For everything will pass away. But he who does the will of God lives forever. Focus on Christ. Do not lose heart. Do not lose focus as well. You hear of wars is happening and rumors of wars. It's going to happen. That's a science of the end of days. It's going to happen. But do not lose focus and do not lose heart. Let me conclude for us today. In the book of Hebrews, very familiar passage of scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And verse 3 says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and you will not lose heart. Okay? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Whatever happens... Whatever you may go through, whatever we are going through right now, I do not know. God knows. Because if we do not fix our eyes upon Christ, if we do not focus on Christ, we will lose heart. And if we lose heart, we will not focus on Christ. But if we focus on Christ, okay, whatever happens around you, I have been through a lot, even though I'm not old, Somewhere in between. But I've been through a lot and I've learned. I have learned to fix my eyes upon Christ. I have learned not to focus on the things that revolve around. Because I get discouraged easily by the things that I hear, the things that I see, the things that you know, I experience in life. So I've taught myself to focus on Christ. Whatever you go through, know that God is bigger than your problems. God is bigger than your circumstances. The song that I used to listen to, for he's the God of the mountains, he's the God of the valleys. Okay? When things go wrong, okay? I forgot the rest of the lyrics. But God is bigger than all your problems. Do not lose heart. Whatever happens, do not lose heart means do not grow weary. Do not throw in the towel. Do not throw in. Do not give in to the devil. Do not give in to, the, to temptations. Do not give in to the, the circumstances that you, you face. The doctors may say no, but we believe in God. 
People may so, say it is impossible, but God is there. We serve a God who is bigger and who is faithful. His words are true. You can trust in Him. You can trust in His words. You can trust in His promises because He is faithful. Again, hold on. Whatever you're going through, I encourage us to hold on. Hold on to Christ. We, do, we hold on by not losing heart, and we hold on by focusing as well on Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you, Lord, for, for encouraging us and reminding us. Yes, we all know about these things, oh Lord, but we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together to encourage us for such a time as this. You alone know what your children are going through, for you see, you hear their prayers, you understand their fears, you understand their doubts and their concerns, for nothing is hidden from you. Everything is laid bare before you, O God. We thank you for the strength that you've given us to endure. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll continue to encourage us from day to day so that we will not grow weary and we will not lose focus and we will not grow tired, O oh Lord. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the encouragement that you've given us and that you are, through your words and through your promises and through your faithfulness upon our lives, Heavenly Father. Again, O oh Lord, we thank you for today. Glorify your name. And thank you, Lord, that your will be done upon each and every soul that is present here so that you alone will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone say...